Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today we're going to be making this card-like effect in the Godot game engine version 3.2. We are going to be able to make different versions of the cards, some fast, some slow. The way we're going to be making this is going to be very similar to the blocks, which if you saw the previous tutorial, was looked something like this, where we were able to grab blocks and move them around. It's going to be very similar, based off very similar code, and uh, let's get right into it. So the way we're going to make our block is we're going to need a area 2D, we're going to need a sprite collision shape and this time we're going to need a tween. The tween function is very important because it allows us to make those smooth silky animations that you saw at the beginning of the video. We're going to need some signals, the same signals we saw last video if you saw that. I highly recommend you go watch this before that one. There will be a card somewhere in the video. If you didn't see that video, I'm just going to go over it briefly. Uh, we're going to connect our signals, the mouse entered, the mouse exited signals. We're going to make sure we have this boolean variable called mouse in equal to true when the mouse has entered the block. We're going to set it equal to false when the mouse exits the block. Other than that, there's not going to be much else different. For example, if the followable variable is equal to true, then the global position is equal to the global mouse position, subtract the difference. When we release the mouse button, we're going to make a tween and we're going to start it. Now, this tween is going to uh, take in a lot of arguments. Uh, for example, the first one is going to be self. And I just went ahead and copy pasted the documentation where, about the boolean dot interpolate property function. And we're going to be taking in an object, which is going to be ourself, the property node path, which is going to be a string of the property we want to change, which is going to be the global position of the object. We're going to say the initial variable is where we are right now. The final variable, well, we want to say it's going to be where we start. And the best way to get the position of where we start is that if we make a variable called position, right? And we just at the ready function, which happens at the beginning of the scene, we set position equal to the global position. Then we're just going to be able to make a reference to where we started, right? This is the starting position and this is where we are right now in time. And we're just going to be able to make a very nice line to where we want to go. But we don't have to do any vector maths here because the tween node handles that all for us. Then we're going to have a duration variable, which is just going to be an exported variable, which is important because that allows us to make different types of cards. We're going to have a tween dot trans back. You can do whatever you want. I found trans back gives it that little uh, springy effect. And then comma, sorry, uh, transition type and then ease type. We're going to do ease out so it slows while it reaches its final position. And there's going to be no delay because you want this to be a snappy responsive effect. And that's all we have to say. And when I was doing this, when I was making this, I was so confused as to why it doesn't work because you have to actually type tween.start. And that's all you have to do. If anything in this code doesn't make sense, the first tutorial explains it all and, and the code is in the description below on GitHub. So if we run this scene, we're going to get what we expect. And I just went ahead before and I actually, you can see that the duration variable is changed for some of them. Oh no, don't move it down. Uh, it's actually changed for some of them. Some are longer, some are shorter, and if we just run it, we're going to see that the longer ones will look like this. Doesn't look that uh, pleasing to my, in my opinion. These ones look really nice, the snappy ones and the less so. This one looks interesting for someone who's making a really like slow moving game, I don't know. And these are basically what we have. And you can see that we can put cards on top of each other, they just go back to where they are. And you can move multiple cards at the same time, it doesn't matter. If you want to make the card, for example, if you're trying to make some Hearthstone type game where the card actually enlarges or something while it goes over the play area, then you can easily do that through other methods. And if that's of interest to you and you want to see a tutorial about that, please comment that down below and I'll try to make that. And if you want the card to have some sort of effect, like it's a, uh, I want to say Slay the Spire, but I'm not 100% sure. If you want to have that sort of effect, all you have to do is you have to say something like an area over here, an area 2D. You, got, you have to go, if this block is in this area 2D, play an animation, a fancy animation, and do some damage or enemy dot uh, damage and pass in a variable or something. Or if you want to have a heal card for your players on the left-hand side, you can just, um, if this is the heal card, you can just go, if this if you have another area 2D just over here, and you can say something like, when this, blo uh, when this card is overlapping, just make sure that the player is able to be healed, and that's really all to it. So if you have any questions of how this works or if you need any further explanation, I do not mind helping you guys down in the comments and that's all to it. Thank you for watching.